Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. In this day and age, many women only find their value by being a sex object for men. They destroy their self-worth by objectifying themselves. They, for example, only see themselves as sex objects uh, with public displays of their beauty and public displays of their sexuality. And especially with social media, you find that women are using the social media platforms to uh, expose their bodies, do sexual acts, do all kind of things which belittle them. Because every time they do those kind of things just for the pleasure of men, or for money even, as is almost a type of prostitution, it's a taking of themselves, a taking of their own spirituality and their own worth. So you find that women often lose themselves spiritually and mentally. And some of the repercussions of that is they can't grow as individuals because they see themselves only as objects uh, for others to play with. A third point with regards to this objectifying themselves sexually is it also sets them up for failure uh, in the future with unhealthy relationships if it's only based on your your beauty and what your makeup look like and so forth. Sometimes marriages uh, are short-lived because of this very reason. She looked so beautiful <laughs> that first night, but after that she was totally different because it was all makeup, it was all fake. And also, when you objectify yourself, you also have to remember that your beauty wears out. That if someone can't begin to see what's inside of you, then they'll never, uh, they'll never know who you really are. And you may not even have developed as a person because you, only, you yourself have only seen yourself externally and as a source of pleasure for others. This is also a type of reduction of your humanity. And by instead of being viewed as an intelligent, worthy person, you're looked at only as uh, a tramp, in essence. And I recall a true story once, many, many years ago, and I was doing some transactions. I used to sell uh, perfumes and body oils and things like this. And I remember talking to a woman and... Of, she was a very beautiful woman, but she wore the tightest clothes. Everything was, was out. And we got into this discussion, because she saw me as a Muslim being covered, actually, you know, being modest in my dress. And I said, how is it that you can allow for people? People can't even begin to look past your, your physical because it's all out there. You've already shared that which is most sacred and most intimate about yourself. And you've already defined yourself. And she said, well, men should be under better control of themselves. I said, yes, they do need to control themselves. But you have enticed them. You've enticed them towards their nature. It's their natural inclination to love and look at women. So you have uh, put yourself out there as an object, thinking that we should see beyond that and look to your self-worth. But you haven't even given us the opportunity. Because you're not dealing with reality of the nature, but instead you're dealing with uh, what you believe things should be, how things should be. And this is a, a, a ideology that's prominent amongst contemporary feminists. You know, I can wear, I can do, I can whatever I want, and there should be no consequences. Yes, maybe there shouldn't be consequences, but the reality is, is there is. I should be able to walk any place safely in the world, but the reality is I can't, even just because of my skin color or because I'm a Muslim. I can't. So I have to use my intellect as well and put up another barrier and say, well, that place is not necessarily use, uh, beneficial for me to go because I, there's a good chance I may be harmed. Uh, another important aspect I want to mention is the difference is that the Muslim woman that falls into this, that she should be aware that her beauty comes from her hijab, 
from her covering, from her modesty. This is where she gets her honor. This is where she gets her beauty and worth as an individual, but also protecting herself because she's pleasing her Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that example of that modesty and that dignity and that honor and reserving herself, meaning not getting into fornication and these other kind of relationships, that type of honor can even be achieved for the non-Muslim woman. And But the true honor, of course, is going to be if she embraces Islam and worships Allah alone. And I want to share with you a beautiful narration of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was talking about the people of the hellfire. He said the people, he was, he, this is a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala. He said, narrated the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, two types of hellfire or two types of people of the hellfire have not seen before. People with whips like cow's tails, and whipping people with them. And some women who are dressed but look naked. Their hair is like the humps of bacterian camels. They walk in a dainty manner to seduce men. They will not enter paradise, nor will they smell its fragrance, although it can be smelt from such and such distance. So this lets us know that by deliberately showing your beauty and enticing the opposite sex, that this is something that you'll be punished in the hereafter. And it shows us that this is not of the righteous conduct. And as we mentioned from all of those different ways in which, uh, from the evidences which are intellectual based, that they show us that you're not, uh, you're not illustrating your best by just beauty, showing your external appearance, but give the people the chance to look and see what's inside. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.